Hello, I'm Emma B. Perez, life design and career coach for teens and young adults. This Empower Your Teen YouTube channel is all about supporting parents. To learn how your high school or college age child can go from undecided to excited, click the link in the description box. To get even more support as a parent, just stick around by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. Okay, let's get to today's topic. Hello everyone and welcome back to Empower Your Teen. I'm Emma B. Perez. Today we have with us Deborah Beck, who is author of My Feet Aren't Ugly, A Girl's Guide to Loving Herself from the Inside Out. Deborah's life work is all about helping young girls learn to truly love themselves. As a parent of two daughters, she's also devoted to guiding parents through these turbulent years and give them tools they need to create a harmonious connection with their teens. She facilitates workshops, mother-daughter retreats, girls groups, parenting groups, and individual mentoring at Empowered Teens and Parents. Because she has experienced being a tormented teen, and a worried parent, she mentors with heart and compassion. Deborah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I love, I love, I love interviews with you. I just love it. I know. Yes, for those of you who don't know, Deborah and I have done this before, and we enjoyed it then, and it's going to be a blast tonight too. It's always a joy having you back. Yeah. Okay, so before we get into the nitty-gritty, would you mind just kind of sharing your story and how it is you came to mentor uh, teens and parents? You bet. So, you know, as a pretty tormented child and teen, <clears throat> and I didn't really have a good support system at home, and so um, I think that I always believed that it was exclusive to me until I had my own daughters, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, a lot of kids, you know, and, and just don't feel good about themselves. And so it was through having my own daughters that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is my life's work. I've got to help girls in particular feel better about themselves. And that's when it all started. I just started helping girls so that they didn't have to feel like I did and like all, a lot of the girls that I noticed. And, and boys too. I just have always worked with girls. <laughs> <laughs> well that's so great and you also work with parents as well right I do, and I work with parents well it's funny because I used to work with just only teens mm -hmm. and then I realized oh my gosh I am in no man's land unless I'm working with the parents then I brought the parents in and now even though I work with teens as well I work mostly with parents it's and boy we make huge you know shifts in behaviors when I work with the parents yeah. so that's amazing. Well, I'm so glad you're here because, uh, you know, my expertise is college and career. It is not parenting. <laughs> and so, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm working with a teen and, and sometimes the questions come up from parents about dynamic between them or something like that. And I'm like, right. talk with a parenting mentor, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm so glad that you're here because especially in this this time of life for a family is a huge transition. And I talk all the time about how it's, it's a, you know, transitioning into adulthood is a big deal for the, the teen, right? Huge. But it's also a big deal for the parents. It really is. It is. It's such a big deal for them. It is. I mean, like, obviously there's like, oh my gosh, my baby's getting older, but how you parent and that dynamic shifts so much. So I would really love to talk about that a little bit more. Can you, um, for families out there who are watching where their teen is um, just turning 18, we're just getting to, you know, the beginning of their young adulthood. Can you give us just some idea of what to expect as the dynamic shifts? You know, well, I think it, you know, it kind of happens before 18. Mm. And before 17 that, you know, it really starts happening, believe it or not, when they're like 14, 15, where the, the teen starts needing independence, needing to pull away. And then it's up to the parent to um, let go of the reins and give the, the teen more freedom so that they can learn how to make mistakes and learn from their mistakes. So if a parent controls the situation until they're 18, 
and then they go off to college or go off and do whatever they're going to do. They don't have that experience. So mm -hmm. they haven't been trained to really manage their life under the wing of the parents. So I'm always helping parents like let, let go of your fears because that's usually what's guiding them is, oh my gosh, they're going to make a mistake. And I'm always like, yeah, they're definitely going to make a mistake, but wouldn't you rather them make the mistake when they're, under your wing then when they're off at college or off doing whatever you want them to make mistakes so that you can guide them through that mistake to see how they might be able to show up differently in their life the next time so that's a that's a big one and so i always guide parents at 15 start teaching them how to manage their life now and so that by time they're 18 it's not like the parents are holding on so tight because at 18, you're gonna get nothing but friction from a 17 and an 18 year old if a parent's holding on too tight. And then it starts really um, taking its toll on the relationship between mother, daughter, or mother, parents, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it, or I'm sorry, you know, teen and parents, it really takes a toll on that because they're like, I want to be treated like an adult. And the parents are treating them like they're 13 still. Mm -hmm. and, but the problem is that some parents haven't really trained their kids to start managing their life. So the parents are afraid to let go of the reins because they're not making good decisions. That's why they, the earlier you start, the better. Mm-hmm. You too. start at 18. <laughs> right. But this is also the first time, you know, I, I would imagine maybe before 18, you might still have a little bit of veto power, right? But right. when it comes to them making decisions for their next steps after high school, right? can you really say, yes, you have permission or no, you don't? No, no, that's why you want to set it up to where you have a teen that knows how to make good decisions for herself and um, then is making good decisions so that when a parent goes to the teen about going to college, not going to college, but taking a gap year, whatever, it's a conversation mm -hmm. and they trust their teen to do what's in their own best interest. Yeah. If they don't, they're going to come in with a bunch of fear. Mm. The parents are going to be like, no, you can't. Don't take a gap year. Oh my gosh, that's going to ruin your life. And it's like, or maybe it won't ruin their life. <laughs> maybe, maybe right? it won't, right? Right. Maybe that's so, the best thing that they could do. <laughs> so you've had that experience, right? Where your daughter came and said, I'm not sure I want to go to college right away. Yeah, not sure I want to go to college at all. At all. <laughs> right, and uh, here, you know, I'd been talking about it in our family forever. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time to really do all the planning, she said, Mom, I'm not going. And I was just like, I could just feel all this fear bubbling up inside of me because I'm like, no, if you don't go to college, you know, in my mind, I was saying, you're going to have a horrible life. You're going to be this. You're, gonna, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be able to care for yourself. And blah. And I pushed and pushed, and, and it did damage to our relationship. Mm -hmm. And she pretty much told me, look, you need to let me make this decision for myself and back off. And I'm like, got it. Got it. I'm backing off. And so I did. I backed off. And she's a happy, wonderful child, even though that happened. <laughs> she's still okay. <laughs> Even though I thought her life was going to be ruined. Mm -hmm. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. So what advice do you have for parents if their kids are coming and saying, I want to consider other options or I want, I'm considering this gap year. Um, what advice do you have for parents for, for that to not happen where, where it doesn't affect your relationship or you're not told to back off? How can you help them through this decision? Well, you know, I think that as parents, we need to do our own personal development mm. so that, you know, my fear or their fear does not come in. Because if the fear comes in, it takes over. It's a powerful energy. And, it, and once it gets started, you can't, it's almost like you can't stop it. The fear is like so big. And so, I mean, I would just say, take some big, big deep breaths, just 
breathe and just say, okay, I'm going to discuss this reasonably. And I'm going to take their opinions into consideration because the reality is they're old enough to make their own decision and they can make it. So I can come up against them or not. And I believe that when we come up against our kids, what we end up doing is make, we make them defend a position that might not be good for them. Mm -hmm. So I think that if, if your child, if your teen comes to you and says, hey, I'm thinking about taking a gap year, you just say, really? Right, well, what are you thinking? And then they can discuss it. Well, I'm thinking about doing this or that. And what might happen is they may say, you know, well, maybe I won't. Because they're not, see, if, if a parent comes in with, oh my gosh, that's not a good idea, you know, this is what'll happen bad, then they have to defend that position strongly, even though it may not be the best decision for them. It may be, mm -hmm. you don't know. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's not, they will defend it with everything that they have in them. <laughs> and we don't want to put them in a defensive posture. We want them, we want to be able to discuss it and have a discussion of what, what they think. Great, well, what are you thinking? Because, and then just say, well, you know what? I know you're going to do what's right for you. Do you need my help with anything? Do you want to, let's do some research on it. Let's look up what, you know, what that's all about doing a gap year. What would you do during that gap year? You know? That's a great idea. I love that because... I, you know, I tell young people all the time, whenever we make um, a big investment in something, buying a house, starting a business, there's lots of research that goes into that. And it right. should be the same for your next steps because that's a huge investment. It's, a, it's an investment of money. It's an investment of time. It's an investment in your future. So you might as well calculate your return on investment and take the time oh. to do that research. And so this could just be a good first step and doing all that research, like you said. Right. And if you pos position it, like you said, then you can even start to teach them how to research all of this. Right, and to do a pros and cons list. Mm -hmm. So what are the pros of taking a gap year? Because there are. And what are the cons? And there are. And just and looking at it from a reasonable point mm -hmm. of view. When our fear comes in, so what happens is if the parent's fear comes in, then the, the teen's fear comes in. Then all of a sudden, nothing is reasonable with fear. Mm -hmm. And so you can't make a reasonable decision out of that place. So it's best to keep that fear out of there. Then that goes with any decision. Anything your teen comes to you with, if you have fear that comes up, then, then the teen can't think through the, your fear. Mm. let alone her own fear, and then it gets just all messed up in the fear, and then you can't make a good decision. So it's best to keep the fear somewhere over there to make a good decision. So may maybe even take some time before you really react or respond. Right, right, yeah. And then it's okay if a parent says, wow, you know what, um, that really triggers me. I just, can you give me a minute? I'm going to get them because I really want to hear what you're thinking. But right now I've got a lot of fear bubbling up and I don't, I don't really want to talk to you when I have all this fear and then go take some time and deal with your own fears. I, I do a lot of parental work around their own fears. That's the work I do right. and around everything with her team, not just going to school, mm -hmm. but it's everything is because if you have your fear present, then the teen doesn't have room for their feelings. Because they, even if a, if a, a teen comes to their parent with anything, like, oh, you know what, this happened with my boyfriend, and the mother gets all upset, then the teen has to deal with the mother's upset instead of her own upset. She doesn't have any room for her own feelings. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to, as parents, work on what's going on, that disruption that's happening in here, like deal with that before you go to your team. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to go to your team with that mess that's inside of you. And what a great example to show them, I'm having some feelings about this. 
I'm totally. going to deal with that and then come back and have a real conversation. Like what a great example. Right. It's such a great example. And then you come back and you're like, I'm ready. So talk to me, talk to me about what you're feeling and what you're thinking. And then be, listen, don't jump in and try to, yeah, but yeah, but just say, oh, that's interesting. You know, that's a good take. And so how are you feeling about that? Like, are you feeling strongly about that? Or are you wavering? Ask them questions so they can get clear. You can't do that if you're in a big pile of fear. Right. And you can only ask questions out of that place. So. Oh my gosh. I'm the kind of person that I wouldn't be the yeah, but person. I would be the, okay, and here's how you're going to do it. Right. And, and it's going to be X, Y, Z and ABC. <laughs> <laughs> I just got off the phone with a mother mentoring her. And, um, her bit, one of her biggest be old beliefs is I need to fix everything. Mm. And that, and I said, that's a mother thing. Mothers always go into fix it mode. And so that's something that shuts your teens down instantly. When they come to you with a problem and you come with fixing it, it's like, well, I didn't really want you to fix it. I just wanted to voice my opinion and figure it out myself. I wasn't really asking you to fix it. And so when you go into fix it mode, it's from your place of fear and they shut down. They shut down immediately. So try not to do that. Do you have any other just general high level advice for parents as they are shifting to parenting now young adults and, and not just teens? Well, I would say that the biggest thing I hear from teens is she treats me like a baby. And this is a 17 year old, right? <clears throat> Treats me like a child. Is recognize that they're coming into adulthood and they're starting that process right at 15, 16. They're starting to enter that. So recognize that treating them like a child just doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Start treating them more adult like. And that means letting them figure things out. Even if you think, it's not a good decision, you know, ask them questions so they can figure it out. And then if they make a mistake, just say, yeah, so it was a mistake. What do you think you might be able to do next time that <clears throat> might not turn it out, you know, might not have the same outcome. And so I think treating them, um, like you would never tell your girlfriend what you know what to do with oh i think you should do this and oh my gosh you should do that because your girlfriend would just be like that's weird why are you telling me exactly what i need to do right mm -hmm. and so you know when you're coming into having a more adult relationship with your teen you need to treat them like that respect their opinions they're actually really smart they're really bright people and um, give them a little credit, you know, and they're still figuring things out. It's a huge learning curve, you know, being a teen. It's the biggest learning curve they're probably ever going to have. But they also have, a, they're pretty connected to their intuition if we can help them. And I think that when we make all the decisions for our kids, we take away all their intuition. We just, you know, we don't leave them with anything to, to feel like, well, what am I feeling? Is, would that be a good decision? Would that not be a good decision? Oh, my mom just made that decision. So I don't have to think about it. Yeah. You know, that's actually something that I see a lot. Not, not always because of parents, but just because of high school, mm -hmm. you know, the, the way school is, they have yes. very little um, opportunity for choice over their own, you know, through life or <laughs> you know how they want to schedule their day or whatever it is and so it's already a hard enough transition a lot of times even into college because college is such a different um, right. dynamic and experience that that can even be a big transition just because just because of their educational environment you know so Absolutely. what a great opportunity for them to learn these things underneath the wing of their parents rather than um waiting until they get to that age to suddenly have to do do it all themselves that's why a lot of te teens when they go to college they they go cuckoo crazy <laughs> 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 because it's like they're free for the first time and they sort of have a schedule 
you know what I mean? Because they still have a schedule, but, you know, they don't know what to do with all that freedom. Yeah, yeah exactly. And this is another reason why, um, you know, I like the idea of a gap year because it's a little bit of, like, some people think of it as, like a wasted time or putting things off or whatever. But to me, it's an extra year and it's an extra year to learn about life underneath the wing of the parent, wh whether they are still at home or not, like they, they could be doing the program, but it's just an extra year of maturity. It's an extra year of kind yeah. of learning about life and figuring things out before you get into the stress uh -huh. of college, you know? Right, right, yeah. And I think that works really well for t some teens, you know? And some teens just want to jump in and do the whole college, you know, some kids have just loved the learning environment. They want to be in it. They go from that to their masters and they keep going and they keep going. But some kids need a break, you know? Especially, I think now, because I think high school, the way it's set up, you know, I, I'm shocked at the homework that kids have. I mean, I'm like, are you kidding me? They go to school all those hours, then they come home, they eat a snack, and then they have like three to four hours of homework. They can't even, they're like missing their childhood. I did not have that kind of homework yeah. when I was growing up. And neither did my kids. They had homework, but nothing like they have now. I'm not quite sure what's going on in the system. <laughs> it's like they just don't want the kids to be free and have their own voice and be out there doing anything well it has it has they have to have rigor they have to right. be rigorous <laughs> right which i'm like why i'm all about being happy being free let's you know and you can still be educated and be in college and but you don't have to feel so smothered and choked yeah you know through the system so yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So an extra year of just kind of finally getting to breathe, right? Getting a little bit of sight, getting to learn a, a little bit about life in a safe environment um, before you're fully into committing to what you're going to do as an adult. Yeah, and, and maybe do some volunteer work in the field you want to go into, okay. because that looks great on a, you know, on a resume that, you know, that I took a gap year and I, I did some volunteer work. I did, you know, or traveled. I mean, traveling is a great way to get some life lessons. Oh yeah. You know? Travel and volunteer. You can do. Yeah. Both of those are great. Like you said, life lessons, but also just, you know, um, exposure to other cultures and other ways yes. of doing things. Like you said, it's a great resume experience. It's also a great way to to try out, especially if you're doing it within a field that you're interested yes. in. Yes. Yes. Try it out before you commit to the major. I mean there's just so totally. many that you I agree. Do. Like I want to take a gap year now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let me just go try a bunch of things out and it'd be right. Do that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's great for kids. I do to just take some time to you know, just really think, sink in and think about, well, what is it? What, what area do I want to go in and, and go into different places and maybe do, I don't know, an internship or something to see, like, you know, I didn't, I think I, I talked to one, um, she was 22 and she had, had done that before college and she decided to change what she was going to do. Cause she said, I did that. And I realized that is so not what I want to do. Not even a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Good for you. Yeah, I've heard that story so many times. I include it right. in the program when I'm working with teens. I call it career prototyping. Mm. Take all the different I ideas that we do a bunch of exploration and, yeah. and take like, you know, a, a handful or two of ideas and then you go prototype it. And there are a couple of different ways to do that. But volunteering, internships, job shadowing, you know, things like that. And it really yes. just a better idea of the reality of having that job because just having an interest in the subject is not enough. <laughs> it's really not enough. Not at all. I mean, how many times do people spend all of this time, you know, getting a degree, even an extended degree, and then they get into the field and they're like, this is not, not at all. I mean, I had a friend that was, she became an attorney and she worked in the field for three years and hated it hated it. And she's like, I think about all that education and passing the bar. And she became a coach, <laughs> a marriage coach. So it's like, 
So she was still using some part of it, but you know, I mean, so that, ha I, that I think that does happen quite often. Yeah, it does, it does. We don't spend enough time um, just exploring options we just right. go at 18 pick something and here we go <laughs> you know I think a lot of that can come from the pressure of the parent mm -hmm. you've got to pick it you've got to do it you've got to move you know because it's like okay you graduated high school okay now you've got to get into college and they can't even breathe they're making these decisions with like okay okay and that's not a good place to make a decision from Right. So that gap year gives them, like you said, an, a moment to take a breath and decide what is it that I want? What do I really, really want? Exactly. What I see the most actually is like, um, I do meet a lot of parents that are like, hey, I just want my kid to be happy. Like, obviously I want them to be like financially secure and stuff, but I want them to be happy right. and enjoy. Right. joy. But at school, it's just, it's a, you go to college, that's just what you do. They don't often talk about other options other than college. No. no. And, and then when they start working with um, the counselors at school, that's a wealth of knowledge for admissions. In yes. Texas, right? But you've got to already know what you want to major in. And if you don't, then they go, well, just go anyway. Go and right. have declared and figure it out later. But like how? <laughs> you know? No, right. No. And then, then kids end up being in school for a year and then – saying, I, I got to stop. I want to do a gap year, which is like, here it is like a gap year after a year of college. Like, it's too much for me. I, this isn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. So yeah. I think that would prevent it. Doing a gap year would prevent them from having any issues during or picking the wrong, picking you know. The wrong one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. It really is a gift of time to just kind of get off the train a little bit because high school into college is just, such a train ride, you know, it is. get off the train for a little bit, breathe and check in with yourself, figure out what do you want? How do you want to spend your life? What do you want to do with the time that you have, you know, and then find the right path for that. Yes. I'm with you. I think that's good. And then, like I said, it, it's great for some kids and not for others, you know, cause some kids don't want to take they want to go yep. for it. They just Some want to kids, go right into it. They know what they want to do. They know the path that they're going to take. They're going to get there. They're going to finish early or whatever right. it is. Yeah. Um, or they're just ready to get there and have a good time. Or... Right. Get out of the house. I, and I think the biggest thing is that parents need to be open. They need to listen to their kids and, and hear them and be open too. That might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Can you guide your your teen in the right direction, help them make that decision instead of hinder yeah. that decision. I really yeah. like the, the approach that you were talking about before of, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more about that because right. um, that'll really give you a good idea of, I think it'll be much clearer when a kid really has the drive to do this or if they need to take a moment to think about things and figure things out or take a moment to do something else before they commit to this thing over here or whatever it is. Right, right, definitely. And But I think that if you ask and you have a conversation, it's treating them more like an adult and it's a two-way conversation. And, you know, but if your fear comes in, it's not a two-way conversation anymore. It's a one-way conversation. Both parties will get frustrated and the teen will usually just walk off and just say, well, I'm going to make this decision with or without them. And then it might not be a good decision for them, yeah. you know, and they may regret it, you know, mm -hmm. so allowing the teen, you know, like this is their life. Mm -hmm. And by 18, you've pretty much instilled all your values and it, you know, in them there, now it's kind of like, it's time to toss, you know, pass the baton. Yeah, like with their That's life taught them right yes them. yes yes so i think it's you know the best way yeah of doing it for sure well my goodness thank you so much for being here it's always a pleasure talking with you and let's talk again soon absolutely thank you so much emma thank you